Hello and welcome back to part 6 of our Brothers War Limited set review. Today we'll be going over the red commons and uncommons. If you haven't already, please check out the colorless review where we go over how we do our grading and our process. You can see that up above over here at the link uh, right up there. And with that, I do want to get into the red. I will say, my last couple of videos, I uh, had issues with my microphone. I think I've re resolved those. I think I should be coming through clear now, so uh, thanks for uh, working with me on that. All right. Up first, we have Goblin Blast Runner. For one red mana, you get a 1-2 Goblin Creature. Goblin Blast Runner gets plus 2, plus 0, oh, and has Menace as long as you sacrifice a permanent this turn. So in a sacrifice deck, this is a playable card. Uh, if you could make it a 3-2 Menace a handful of times, it can run away with the game, and that is kind of what Black Red wants to be doing here, so I think this is a good card in that deck. Um, I'm going to give this a Synergy Grade because it's not quite enough of a card unless you could be activating the um, Sacrifice ability quite often, so I'm going to give this a Synergy C-. minus. It falls into the playable route, uh, but you do need to be in that deck. <coughs> Up next... We have Bitter Reunion. For one to red, you get an enchantment with when Bitter Reunion enters the battlefield, you may discard a card. If you do, draw two cards. Pay one and sacrifice Bitter Reunion. Creatures you control gain haste until end of turn. So this is a fun uh, thrill of possibility variant uh, with some upside. If, you're, if you need card draw, and a lot of times in the red decks, you'll run out of steam. Excuse me. You run out of steam and uh, need a way to kind of discard some lands in order to get to some more threat cards uh, down the line, and this will do that in a pinch. Um, so I think this is a playable card. I do think it's in filler. It doesn't have a whole lot of impact uh, besides that use case, um, but it is nice to give your to cheaply give your creatures haste. You pay one to get this, and you put in a couple other creatures, say, in play, and give them all haste. That is what this deck wants to do. Um, so I think this is a D plus. Uh, I think this is in the filler slot, but I think this is filler that you will want in those decks. Um, and uh, yeah, better filler. Up next, we have Dwarven Forge Chanter. Uh, for one and a red, you get a 1-3 Dwarf Wizard creature. It has Ward, pay two life, so your opponent needs to pay two life in order to target this with anything. Uh, it has Prowess as well, so any non-creature spell you cast, you get a plus one, plus one uh, until end of turn on this creature. Um, so this, usually your Prowess decks, they tend to be more um, uh, aggressively slanted, and I think in, in this set they'll also... You'll want to be aggressively slanted for prowess, um, but because of that, you get a 1-3 for 2, which is not a horrible rate, but you tend to be wanting the aggressive decks for your creatures to have more than one power, even if it has prowess on it. Uh, so I think this is really just filler. I'm going to give this a D. Up next, we have Mishra's Domination. For 1 to red, you get a Enchant Creature Aura. As long as you control Enchanted Creature, it gets plus two, plus two. Otherwise, it can't block. All right. Um, interesting that uh, it kind of has the, the, the case of uh, if you don't control it. Um, so it's good if they were to steal it somehow. Um, but this hits fairly hard, but it's not really worth a card. The, these... Um, you know, plus X, plus X type or enchantments that don't replace themselves. Um, it's kind of negative card advantage towards you. Um, you know, I, I they keep reprinting these kind of uh, cards in red because red, uh, f you know, fast aggro decks do have the problem of getting your creatures big enough to break through your opponent's line of defense. So they do have a place. Um, so I'm not giving this an F, but I am going to give this a D. I think this is filler. I don't think you're really going to want to play this. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a little bit of a cold going on, so thanks for bearing with me on that. Um, up next we have Rock Hunter. For one to red, you get a 3-1 Reach Creature. Alright, so this is a decent rate. I like my 3 power 2 uh, mana cost creatures. Um, they're good in aggro. Uh, this one even works well with on defense against flying creatures with killing anything with three toughness with flying. Um, the toughness does hurt in this set. I think there's enough power one creatures flying 
flying around uh, enough power one creatures around in this set that um, they can pick this off um, you know fairly easily with a blocker um, but that's not enough for me to really go too much down on this I think this is a playable I think the one toughness makes it a C minus uh, but I think this is a C minus and I like it Up next, Whirling Strike. For one to red, you get an instant with target creature gets plus two, plus oh, and gains first strike, and trample until end of turn. All right, so this is kind of like our Sure Strike variant. Um, we we see this in most sets, uh, and normally it's... I tend to like it more than most players do, because I like my aggro decks that can break through with that first strike, but I agree with the negatives of that card, uh, and I don't play it too often. The negatives being it usually can't get through and, and trample to give the additional damage over through to the opponent because um, usually the sure strike will get plus three plus oh and be too much damage and while you'll kill the opposing thing you're kind of wasting a few damage that you could be dealing to the opponent here you're not wasting that and i do think it's also quite nice if you put this on even as a big creature just giving it plus two and trample um could be enough to finish a game so with all that um i i like this card i think this one's playable um, so it, it, it brings it up from the, the D range all the way up. I still think it's on the low end of playable, so I'm going to give it a C-, minus. but I'll, I'll definitely be playing this card in red. Up next, we have Conscri Conscripted Infantry. For two and a red, you get a 3-1 human soldier creature. When it dies, you make a 1-1 colorless soldier artifact creature token. All right, um... So this does cost one more than Rock Hunter. Uh, so, you know, we, we got our 3-1 here as well, but for three mana. Uh, and I, I don't love that, but the leaving around 1-1 one, one afterwards is enough to make it cost one mana more. I'm okay with that. I think this is kind of on the same level there. Um, I'm going to give this a C-. minus. Excavation Explosion. For two and a red, you get a Sorcery with Excavation Explosion deals three damage to any target. Create a tapped Power Stone token. All right, this is the kind of card that I want to make incidental Power Stones. Uh, I'm okay with a uh, three mana deal three, uh, and the fact that it makes Power Stone token, token with it, I'm all for it. I like this card a lot. I think this is a C plus. Not quite a pull in the red, but um, I'll, I'll be playing this card a lot. Up next, Penragon Strongbull. For two and a red, you get a 2-3 Minotaur creature. Has one sacrifice and artifact. Penragon Strongbull gets plus one, plus one until end of turn and deals one damage to each opponent. All right, so not a horrible rate, even if it's slightly below as a 2-3 for three at base rate. Um, I like the ability tacked onto it. Uh, I think it pulls it up into a strong card at that point. Um, pay one, sacrifice an artifact. Getting it Plus one, plus one, so turning your power stones into um, pumping this thing up with a fairly cheap threat of activation. And also dealing one damage to each opponent is nice. Uh, I think this is a C. I think it's just a solid playable, um, so I'm not overly impressed by it. But um, I'll be putting this in my red decks to get through uh, the extra damage I need to get through in order to seal the deal and win the game. Up next, Raise to the Ground. Two and a red. This spell can't be countered. Destroy target artifact. If its mana value was one or less, draw a card. So with the amount of artifacts going around, especially the amount of artifact creatures going around, this is basically a removal spell. Um, yes, it definitely has downside that it can't kill non-artifact creatures, so don't get me wrong. I'm not giving this a C plus or anything because of that. Um, but it is also nice at worst. It can kind of cycle it for... For, uh, for three as well. I mean, you can destroy a Power Stone token and draw a card. Um, that's a nice fallback for, for this in case you didn't want to kill a, any particular artifact and needed to get a card. Um, so I like this card. I think this is a C. Solid playable. Up next, Tomacool Scrapsmith. For two and a red, you get a 2-1 Human Artificer creature. When Tomacool Scrapsmith enters the battlefield, mill three cards. You may put an artifact card from among the cards milled this way into your hand. If you don't, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. All right, so this is the red version of that series of cards that mill some and then can draw if you mill the right thing. Otherwise, it becomes slightly better, um, you know, in terms of power and toughness. You'd rather get the card, though. Um, 
So this becomes all about how often you'll hit. <clears throat> um, I like this is that this is cheaper than some of the other ones that we've seen. I like my cheap draw card spells. Um, this one does only hit artifacts, and like we said, though, artifacts are plentiful in the set, so I think this will hit a decent amount of the time, but I still think it'll hit much, much less often than, say, your, um, your one that targets creatures, because a lot of your creatures are, yes, artifact creatures, but a lot of them are not, right? Um, <clears throat> and so with that, I still think this hits playable. I like three mana draw card 2-2, two, two, or 2-1. Two, um, three mana, 3-2, three, mill a few cards is not horrible. Um, so with that, I think this is playable. I think this is a C- because when it doesn't hit, I'm not as happy about it. But this is a playable uh, C- this is. Up next, we have Falaji Chain Dancer. For three and a red, you get a 2-4 human soldier creature. It has pay two, and it gains double strike until end of turn. All right, um, this is g really good against two, two toughness creatures, right? Um, and it's even okay against four. Um, and I don't really like spending, though, two mana to make this ability, but it's nice when you can. It's definitely underrated at a 2-4 four for four otherwise, but that that double strike does bring it up quite a bit. It's nothing special, but I think you will play it. I have this right now as a solid C. That might even be a little high. This might actually be a C-. minus. I'll start this off as a C, though, because um, I do think you will have enough power stones and stuff around to play this ability more often than you otherwise would. Um, so I think this is a C. Up next, we have Mishra's Onslaught. For three and a red, you get an instant with choose one, two, create two 1-1 one, one colorless soldier artifact creature tokens, or creatures you control get plus two plus O oh until end of turn. This is playable when you're going wide. Otherwise, it's not. Um, it's nice that it can help you with both. It can help you go wide, or it can pump things up. So this is much better in multiples because of that fact, because usually you want your plus 2 plus 0 to kind of um, be the, the winning blow and only play that once in a game, um, and otherwise you're trying to build up your board. So this does both. Um, it's still not a, a high pick. I give this a synergy, C-. minus. You're definitely going to want to play it uh, when you are going wide. And again, you you, you can make, want multiples, so I think it's on the playable range, but it's lower end playable, C minus. Synergy C minus. Up next, Sibling Rivalry. For three and a red, you get a sorcery with gain control of target artifact or creature until end of turn. Untap it, it gains haste. Create a tapped Power Stone token. <coughs> Excuse me. Um. So when you're in the Sacrifice theme, this, this card's playable, right? We've seen anytime we have the Sacrifice theme in a set, this type of card comes up. I do think this is a pretty nice version of that card, giving you a, a Power Stone token with it. Um, I still, in general, don't really love these cards. I know people love to steal a creature, use an attack on it, and sacrifice it, and then gain something, and that definitely is a big blow, don't get me wrong. It's just that it's typically expensive to do. You have to pay the 4-man up front, up front, and then you have to find some way to sacrifice the creature, and that usually costs additional mana. So, on average, it usually costs like 7 mana to do the thing. Um, but... Then again, I mean, it, it has a decent amount of power. So I think this is in the playable range. I love that it gives you a Power Stone token as well. Um, I'm going to give this a Synergy C-. Uh, when you're in Sacrifice, you're going to want to do this. Um, yep, Synergy C- minus it is. Up next, we have Unleash Shell. For 3 and Red Red, you get an instant. With it deals 5 damage to our creature or player, or Planeswalker and two damage to that permanent's controller. These five mana removal spells are always clunky. I mean, it kills most things, not everything, especially in this set with all the um, really high power toughness creatures. Um, you know, but it it's hard to give it anything lower than filler. It will remove a thing. If you really need that uh, removal, you'll play this. Um, I think this is a D plus. It's on the higher end of your filler. But again, I'm, I'm really not looking to play this unless I have to. Moving on to the uncommons. We have Monastery Swift Spear, which I think was a uh, reprint of a pretty powerful card in Constructed. 
uh, but I'm going to read it out first. Uh, one red for one, two human monk creature with haste. It has prowess, so whenever you cast a non-creature spell, give it plus one, plus one. This card can go pretty fast. Um, the, the haste, one mana, that alone uh, makes it fast, and the prowess really adds it up to being fast. But this really is more of a constructed card than this is a limited card. In limited, you don't have all the resources to back up all your fast things and really utilize their power. You can't just put a ton of instants and sorceries in your deck unless you were playing Dominary United, right? Um, I don't think this is a set where you can do that. Um, I'm not saying it's a bad card, but I'm looking to have more inherent power in my cards than just speed in limited. With that, I'm going to give this a filler grade. I think this is a D+. Plus. Um, it's one of your better one-mana creatures, but for the most part, I'm looking to avoid one-mana creatures in limited and move just straight to two two-mana creatures. And I like having a lot of two-mana creatures, right? I, I like playing fast. Um, but remember, two is, is double one, and uh, they add quite a bit more power per card that way. And if you play a whole bunch of one mana uh, creatures, you're going to run out of steam real fast and not have cards to support your backup. So that's what I'm worried about with this card. Not quite worth a card. Who knows, though? Maybe there will be enough spell support that I'll have to bite my words. Uh, not every take is uh, is right here. Um, just my experience on it. And uh, tends to be... Decently accurate. All right, Horned Stoneseeker. For one red, you get a 2-2 lizard creature with menace. When Horned Stoneseeker enters the battlefield, create a tap Power Stone token. When Horned Stoneseeker leaves the battlefield, sacrifice a Power Stone. <clears throat> All right. Now, here's a two-mana creature I like a lot. Um, already above rate, 2-2 two, two menace for two. Great. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it makes a Power Stone token as well. I get that for free without even paying another mana on top of it or anything. Count me in. Yes, it sucks that when it leaves the battlefield, you sacrifice a Power Stone. But there's a few things. First of all, just don't let this die until you use your Power Stone a few times, right? At least you get some benefit there. Secondly, Red seems to want to be using Power Stones as like sacrificing them or using them for some other purpose a lot of the time rather than just using it for the mana. So I think you'll have a way to get rid of your Power Stone token before this dies, and then you don't have to sacrifice anything. So with all that said, I think this is a pull in a red. I think this is a B. This is one of the stronger cards we've seen so far. Up next, a card I like a lot as well, even a little bit more is a obliterating bolt for one to red you get a sorcery it deals four damage to target creature or planeswalker if that creature or planeswalker were to die this turn exile it instead two mana four damage to a creature or planeswalker is already above above rate right usually for two you're dealing three um two to deal four excellent and then the fact that this exiles the thing so they can't get it back from the graveyard nor can they do an unearth on it Yes, count me in. This is a solid B. Doesn't quite move up to B plus because it's not a two for one, which is kind of my um, separation there. But it's a strong B. Love this card. Up next, we have Stardian Cliff Stomper. For one to red, you get a zero four Minotaur Barbarian creature. As long as it's, as it's your turn and you control four or more mountains. It gets plus X plus O, where X is the number of mountains you control. All right, so basically, if you're mono red, you could expect this to be a 4-4 four, four for 2 on your turn only. That definitely hurts it. Uh, but it also can grow, too. It could be a 5-4, four, 6-4. Four, you know, it de uh, depends how many mountains you have in play. So this is among those that set of cards where you want to be monocolored. You really only want to play this when you're mono red. Um, but it's pretty good there. <laughs> I'll take that back a little bit. It, it, it's not just mono red. I think this one has a little bit, bit more where you can get into some other colors, but I, th I think your primary color needs to be red, and I don't really think you want to be more than two colors playing this. Um, so this has a little bit more give than the other ones, but uh, I'm really not excited about this until I am mono red. Um, and I'll give this a synergy B-. minus. I do think this pulls me into red um, when I'm doing that mono red thing. Up next, we have Giant Cinder Maw. 
For two and a red, you get a 4-3 dinosaur beast creature with trample. Players can't gain life. There's nothing not to like about this card. Um, this is a 3-mana 4-3 already above rate. Add trample to it, which is exactly what I want on my, my bigger, faster creatures in red to deal damage through to the opponent. And after I deal that damage, players can't get it back. Players can't gain life. Yes, that hurts you too. But when you're in red, you're probably not looking at a game a whole lot of life anyway. Um, so this is just a benefit. Um, I'm giving this a B. I think this is a solid pull into red. <coughs> Up next, we have Mishra, Excavation Prodigy. For two in a red, you get a 2-1 Human Artificer Legendary Creature. It has haste. You can pay one and tap it and discard a card to draw a card. Whenever you discard one or more artifact cards, add a red red. This ability triggers only once each turn. Alright, so this is the counterpart to the Urza Artificer Prodigy or whatever it was called in blue. Uh, this is his little brother in the storyline, Mishra. Uh, and unfortunately, I think uh, Wizards did not give little brother the fair end of the deal here. Um, it's true, red wants to go fast and adding more mana quickly uh, to play out multiple spells a turn helps you do that, so that's a nice ability. Um, but ultimately, for three mana, I'm looking to get more out of my cards than have it be a base rate of 2-1, even if it has haste. Um, and in order to discard an artifact card, unless you have something else to discard it, you're paying one here to get two. Um, not a bad ability, but not overly impressive either. I'm just going to give this one a C. I think I gave his brother a B, um, so that's a full letter grade difference. Sorry, little brother. Um, I don't think you're quite up to par with older brother. Up next, we have Arms Race. Uh, for three and a red, you get an enchantment with three and a red. You may put an artifact card from your hand onto the battlefield. That artifact gains haste. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. All right. Uh, fun card in that, like, I like the idea of Arms Race, uh, building up big artifacts quickly and getting them onto the battlefield quickly. Um, this one is a hard card to judge. It will have a big impact if you draft a lot of the big artifacts in this set, which I think will be good and you'll want to be drafting them. Um, but it itself costs a card with no impact directly, and I, I, you'll see a theme of I don't really like cards that don't impact, uh, the board themselves. They just help you impact the board using other cards. And it is pretty expensive to do it still. You are still putting up four mana straight up. Then four mana another turn just to get something onto the battlefield for one turn. If you can land something from your hand, big artifacts, multiple times, having those big artifacts come into play early with haste is a big deal. So getting that onto the battlefield multiple times, and then a lot of those will also have unearth where you can then reuse. You know, it, this is a way to get into the graveyard as well, so you can you can unearth it later on. So that's all nice. I'm, I'm skeptical, but I can see myself coming up on this card. Given that, I'm going to give this a C- minus grade for right now, and it's possible I come up down the line, um, but I'm not in love with this card quite yet. Up next, we have Pyrrhic Blast. For three and a red, you get an instant with as, long, or as an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a creature, and it deals damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power to any target. Draw a card. All right, so doing it to any target, that's great. This is a good finisher. You can deal directly to your opponent, like sacrifice your, your biggest power thing, and boom, go to face. Um, it can sacrifice any creature, you know, uh, kill one of their threats. Uh, it replaces itself, right? So the fact that you sacrifice a creature is not that big of a deal because you still get to draw a card. Yes, you did use a card to deal damage, but um, that's fine. Uh, ultimately, I like this card a good amount. It's not card advantage, so I'm not going to go insane with loving this, but I think this is uh, a good enough rate to pull this, give me basically pull me into red slightly. I'm going to give it a B-. minus. Up next, we have the Fall of Krug. For four red red, you have a sorcery. Uh, choose target opponent. Destroy target land that player controls. The Fall of Krug deals three damage to that player, and one damage each creature they control. 
this isn't quite impactful enough for me to I, 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 having read the storyline the fall of krug was a was a big deal in the book um a whole city gets obliterated it's kind of the time where mishra and the falaji um get their first big win against uh urza and um that whole side of the brothers war um this is a playable card it does a lot you, you've destroyed a land in a set where you kind of want to be ramping into the big artifacts, so that definitely sets them behind. <clears throat> um, dealing three damage to the player is nice. That's not insignificant. <clears throat> and then dealing one damage to each creature they control, you know, that's the part that's situational. That, that could have the biggest impact, ultimately. Um, you want them, you know, make, like I, sometimes this will just kill one creature and then it's okay. If this kills multiple, you're doing the thing, like, then it's good. Um, but sometimes it might kill none, and then it's really not worth that card. Uh, so it, it's so variable. I don't really like my variable cards that much. Uh, I still think this is in the playable range, so I'm going to give this a C-. minus. We'll see again where this falls out, if there's enough one toughness creatures. I haven't ran through the stats on that. Um, but starting this with a C-, minus, um, I'm not overly impressed. That's it for the commons, uncommons, and red. Uh, up next, we'll be moving on to green. Thanks again. See you next time. Bye-bye.